I'm back this week with another episode of FTK Feature Focus. Last week I was preparing for our Infusion Conference, which is happening uh, here in the next week, September 2021. I was also going on PTO. So I just didn't have time to record or even pre-record an episode for last week. So we kind of took last week off on this front. But this week we're back and we're going to be talking about duplicates. Welcome to this week's episode of Feature Focus. Welcome to this week's episode of FTK Feature Focus. I'm Justin Tolman, the Director of Training over in North America here at Xtero. And like I said, this week we are going to be talking about duplicates, specifically how to process for them, how to find them, when you may want to look at them, when you may not want to look at them, when you may want to use the, the filter features on it, and when you may not want to use those filter features. We'll take a look at all that in this episode. All right, let's jump into it. So let's start with processing. How do we process for duplicate files? Well, in evidence processing, you have to have MD5 turned on and flag duplicate files, and that's as much as you need. It's going to use the MD5 of every file to determine whether or not you have duplicates. Now, if you were to say check flag duplicate files and not have MD5, it's going to warn you. If you had neither of them selected and you select flag duplicate files, it will automatically turn on MD5 so that, you know, all of its dependencies are ready to go. Also, just be aware that you don't have to run it at the beginning of your case. You can always use additional analysis, but know that you will still have to scan your entire evidence set to execute the flag duplicate scan. So if you're going to do that, I recommend starting at the end of your shift or at the start of a weekend. How long it takes depends on the size of your evidence and you're doing very minimal, just MD5 comparisons, but you just don't want that running during your workday. So just save that for later. All right, so let's jump into our case here. And we have just a small little uh, data set to illustrate some of the basic features here of duplicates. So we're looking at Microsoft Word documents and specifically all the same document as far as name and different things like that. So uh, we have the apocalyptic manifesto and in this uh, I've created a custom column set which you can do and you can just look at here uh, for the set of just the high level information that we may want to know if we're looking only for duplicates. Of course, if you were looking for duplicate documents, you could add stuff like author, last saved by, etc. here. But these first four columns are just kind of general duplicate based information. These ones out here, of course, are specific to office documents. The two important columns, one more than the other kind of, but Two important columns are duplicate file and MD5. So again, the MD5 hash is what's used to determine a duplicate. So we can see through there, if we were to sort by this especially, we've got a bunch of those duplicates, one of those duplicates, and then some of these duplicates. And we can see here in the duplicate file, the primary and secondary. So we basically have three primary files, three sets of duplicates. How FTK determines what is the primary and what is the secondary is simply based on the order in which it comes across it in processing. This does not mean necessarily that this file was created first or the original or anything like that. It just means that the processing engine came across this and then proceeded to come across some of the secondaries and mark them as such. Okay. But because they are MD5 perfect matches, they are the same content of the file. Now that comes to the first um, consideration when dealing with duplicates in a forensic environment. Even though they are the same as far as content, that doesn't necessarily mean that a, each instance has a different story to tell. They could have been downloaded via attachment, downloaded via the website. It could have been used in a cloud system such as Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, Apple Drive, Apple iCloud Drive something like that. So the path, the location on the drive may also tell that story. So if I switch out of this case really quick over to here and we look at our path, we can see that even though we have the 
all these apocalyptic manifestos, we have some that are coming back to Windows Mail, some that are coming back to OneDrive, some that are in downloads, etc. So even though they're duplicates, it doesn't mean they're exactly the same as far as the story that they can tell. So just be careful when you get into that. If your only concern is the content, then perfect, you're good to go. So we'll switch back to our other watered down case here. So again, primary, secondary. So if we wanna remove the duplicates using a filter to emulate something like that you would see on the graphics tab, tab filter, I'll show you that here. So down here you can see the tab filter is graphic files without dupe and without ignore. So to emulate that, if I come up to the top and apply no duplicates, which is a default filter in FTK, you can see that it removes all the secondary uh, instances of that file. So that can be useful for minimizing clutter. If you're looking at a large list of documents or files in general, it'll bring you down to the uh, just the primary instances. Remember, it's the first one that the processor came across, but because of the MD5 match, you know that the content of it is the same. Again, remember though, the story that each may tell based on the path or the location on the disk, you're not gonna get that. So what is your goal there? Is it just the content? Great, eliminate those duplicates. Just get it down to what you have. If it's more of a wider net, what the file is doing, I'd recommend maybe not running that filter. And also same with graphics tab. If you're running a child exploitation case or something like that in graphics, you may want to see all the duplicates because if they're copying them, transferring them, that sort of thing, just have a 10,000 of the same image, whatever the case may be, you want to know that and you want to be able to see that. So I would recommend also changing the graphics tab, tab filter. So just be aware of those limitations. There is another filter in here I'll just bring up called duplicates, all right? And this would be used to show duplicate files. Notice that they're all here. If you put this into the filter manager to omit them, it would omit all duplicate files, including the primary and the secondary thing, so you wouldn't get it. Remember to use the no duplicates filter in the dropdown list. The last thing I wanna point out with duplicates is just a silly example, but to show it, we have this one document called totallyharmless.docx, but it is a duplicate of one of the apocalyptic manifestos. The content is the same, etc., And that's just to show that using duplicates like this can be useful for finding renamed documents as well. So changing the name alone will not impact this because of course we know that changing the name of a file does not impact the MD5 hash. So it still works as a duplicate and we can find that in there as long as nothing in the content has changed. One thing to be aware of though is created time, last save time, author, last save by, and a bunch of other office metadata information. If those were to change, of course, the hash will change. These are not file system properties, but actual file properties in this case. That is kind of an intro to duplicates, when to use it, some considerations when using it. And when used right, it can help you reduce the amount of stuff you have to go through and help narrow in on the stuff that you care about. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next week.